Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is my Sunday chat. Well, when I say chat, it's more of a monologue really, isn't it? But you know what I mean. It's a sort of an opportunity where I can chat to you. I used to do these quite a bit, actually, just as sort of informal sitting down, having a, a time to almost kick off your shoes and and lean back and just take it easy. Um, as you know, I try to put out a video every day and on the whole, I pretty much managed to do that, which is fantastic. But um, with the lockdown and with the live shows and with all the traveling about that I've been doing, um, it's quite uh, it's quite a lot to do, as you can imagine. And I thought it would be just nice to do at least one show a week now, which is easy. <laughs> so I come in the studio and just record uh, a little informal chat to you, catch up with things that have been going on in the week, extra bits, perhaps comments from some of the viewers, things that have caught my eye, um, places that we have been to that it's been suggested to go back again and all of that, just something very relaxing. So hence that's what uh, this is really. So the first thing I wanted to chat about, um, and I've made a, a little informal list here to go through, is my van my van now you've seen the van um you know feature in some of the videos recently and of course there was a flurry of excitement when we got the van and all of that i just wanted to really sort of let you know that i'm thoroughly enjoying it i haven't done anything more to it somebody said and in fact uh, paul the chap i bought the van off said don't do anything to it for a while until you really got used to it and thought about it because I think a mistake would be to just go and instantly change things on the van and then think, oh, no, actually, that doesn't really work. Better to use the van, get used to it as it is, the way it's laid out with its bunk and the pull-down table and, and all of that, and then, in time, decide, as you use it, the things that actually could be improved. And there's a number of things I'm thinking of, but probably nothing is going to happen over the winter period and I'll wait till it's a bit warmer and easier to to deal with. But that said, there's a few things that I would like to buy and that is um, a better little stove. I've got some little stoves for heating up the kettle for cups of tea and that's great. But I'd like to have a, a little set of saucepans and frying pans and various things. Very lightweight, very thin so that the the gas heat gets through very quickly and you can cook eggs and bacon because I mean one of the ideas that I want even in the winter period would be to get up somewhere really early or even drive somewhere late at night stay in the van and get up in the morning earlier um, particularly if the roads are icy it's sort of go the night before before the night the ice has set in and then wake up with um, if it's going to be a nice sunny day with a beautiful sunrise and have breakfast somewhere in a beautiful environment and of course film that and show what it's like. When we get into this sort of time you get some of these cold mornings and you get this mist rising and if the sun is low and it hits through it on the sunrise it can be very very beautiful and very photographic. So that's one of the things that I think having a van is going to be really useful for for me because I'm interested not only in telling the story of heritage, landscape and nature and exploring all of this, even though I may not be that much of an expert in anything. Um, getting some nice shots is very much important to me. But I'm enjoying the van. Um, it's been great and I'm getting more used to uh, driving it, particularly reversing. I'm slowly learning how all of that works. It's uh, a bit diff different for me because I've not had to be used to the two mirrors either side when you're driving. I still open the window and peer behind me as I bring it up the back alley where I live. So that's quite interesting. Interesting. Um, talking of um, video and um, the photographic quality of stuff, you may have remembered that uh, I've been trying out a gimbal fairly recently and I've had a few issues with it. Now a gimbal is the device that um, with three motors holds a camera stationary so that you get nice smooth shots and although I did purchase one a while back about six months back I hadn't really used it very much I found it quite clunky and awkward um, and quite heavy when you've got the camera on it a, a mirrorless camera or a DSLR 
And then I started to use it in the lockdown. I thought, well, I can go out and, and experiment with it. And I struggled with it, really. Uh, in the end, I ended up getting very frustrated and just almost smashing the thing up. But um, I put it away. It still works. Um, and I think I will use it on specific projects where I want certain effects. But I, I, as you will have noticed in the more recent videos, I've just been experimenting with what I call wobbly cam. Um, and this is an unstabilized camera. And some people have said actually it's more like natural wobble rather than, uh, you know, nasty wobble. I'm, I'm still, I find it, what's the word I'm looking for? Embarrassing, I suppose, that somebody who's got quite a bit of experience of filmmaking has gone back to almost very much the basics where you're just holding the camera on a stick or a handle or a little tripod thing. And, uh, and of course, the horizons are moving over all over the place and that it's wobbly and it's not static. Um, but sometimes, particularly when working with other people or on longer walks, taking a tripod and, and fixing it down is, is a lot to carry. And you lose what I think is most important is the spontaneity in the videos. And I was using the, GIM, uh, the GoPros and little action cameras. I'm, I'm sort of shying away from that, not very happy with the overall quality and the colour. It's just something that I personally don't like. I think most people don't even notice, but I personally have found them irritating um, and more so the more I use them. Now, a lot of people use them and they're very convenient and I've used the, the GoPro ever since I started to do the daily videos and it's they're great little cameras, but I want to move on. I want to, as I've said many times, improve the quality and change how I do things. So for the moment, I'm just using wobbly cam, which I hope is not too off putting. Do let me know if you do find it very difficult to watch, um, because I certainly don't want that. And I have got my eye on a very lovely camera, but it is very expensive. And then the lenses go with it are expensive. But I'm hoping that in the new year, that I might have saved up enough to make the purchase and go with that. But um, in the meantime, um, I do like the immediacy and the quickness and the speed of working. And I have to work very fast when I'm out walking because I've got to get the walk um, or the video shot rapidly and then bring it back, edit it, get it all ready so that it's primed for the next day generally. Um, because in the afternoons, and in the evenings, I've got my live readings, which I've been thoroughly enjoying and is slowly building up a larger audience, which is superb. And of course, then I do the Vogue show, which is a different animal to the Bald Explorer on a separate channel. And that's a live show. Um, lockdown this time round has not felt to me, I don't know how it feels to you, uh, in the same way that the first lockdown was. And I'm pleased about that. And in the first lockdown, of course, we were very restricted. And um, I spent a lot of time exploring Worthing, where I live, and going around the streets. And people were very complimentary. Some people found it a bit awkward that I was out and about, apparently working. Um, and... As I did try to explain, you know, like in this lockdown, we are allowed to go out for exercise. And the fact that you're carrying a camera and filming yourself doing that exercise as such, there's certainly no law against that. But some people have found that difficult, a difficult concept to quite get together. But this lockdown doesn't feel um, like uh, the, the lockdown of the past. And I've actually found it as we've gone through it interesting to see the alternative points of view to the whole coronavirus situation now i know some people think that the mainstream media and the government's take is the only take and that's absolutely fine people can accept that but um i do like to have a look at the other side of the coin and evaluate what other people are saying particularly other um, scientists and uh, specialists who have um, concern about it and it's it's just great that there is the
the social media and YouTube and other aspects, podcasts and things where people can voice an alternative. And I think that's very healthy and so that we can all make up our own mind. So I hope that we're in the middle of this lockdown. I hope that you're finding it not too difficult and that uh, the Bald Explorer stuff just, you know, brings a bit of the outdoors to you when you're indoors, if you are. I'm very indebted to my listeners and viewers who have sent me things over the last few months and in particular those that have sent me books. And I know Sean James Cameron, who runs his own allotment channel, he's sent me a book. Um, let me see which one is it here. Here we go. Neighbourhood by Tickner Edwards, which is um, the story in a year of a particular neighbourhood. And Tickner Edwards is an author that we're reading currently, although we hope to finish it next week, um, which is Lift Luck on Southern Roads, which is an unusual title, I grant you. And we're reading that on our daily live shows. You may have seen them pop up from now and then. Um, they're going really, really well, and people do enjoy them. I do, I do struggle occasionally on the reading live, on the fly, but uh, overall I'm getting a bit better at it, which is great. Um, and we've got another book that we're coming up with that um, a lady called Justine Jones has sent to me. Again, these are old books, but I'm particularly interested in the live reading on travel writers and people who've explored the UK and England in particular. And the next one that we're reading or going to read is called On Southern Roads by, and I have to keep looking his name up, James John Hissey, who wrote at the end of the 19th century. So these are well out of print uh, books, beautiful um, books and very sort of chatty books. And we like that sort of thing. And in our live show, if you've not seen it, while it is just me sitting here reading, uh, we also occasionally stop, have a look at maps, have a look at the towns that these people, our authors, have visited and look at the changes. And one of the things that I'm very keen in the spring, when we've got past most of this virus nonsense and the days become a bit longer and warmer again and the weather is a little bit more predictable, is to get out and follow more in the footsteps of them. I've recently been making in the footsteps of Walter Wilkinson, who wrote a book called The Sussex Peep Show, which we also read on the live. And I've done a few of those. I want to continue with that. One of our viewers, Nigel Sadler, is plotting the route that he took around Sussex. And um, it's interesting to go back 100 years later and see how much of it has changed from the descriptions um, that uh, the authors give. So going to be doing more of that, definitely. I think during the winter period, because it's cold and sometimes the weather is just not ideal to go out and make videos in the landscape. And last year I was reading from the much acclaimed book Tales of Old Sussex by Philip Mercer, an old ancient a volume of these very peculiar stories that uh, Philip Mercer, who was a curate, collected up in um, the early 1800s, I think, and published his book in 1834. I'm going to be um, reading uh, or in reinterpreting because some of the language in the original book is quite lengthy and wordy. So I sort of read it to myself, rephrase it and present it. And I've done a few and you can check them out. Uh, people seem to like those, so I should do a few more of those on the cold winter evenings, perhaps by my little front log-burning fire, which always looks great. And finally, it's lovely to get your suggestions for walks. And every now and again, people do suggest them. Sometimes they suggest places which are too far away at the moment to go and look at. And other times they do suggest places um, that we we do try and do. And it, we're always open to ideas. So if you do have any ideas, do just pop um, a comment in or an email or a message on Facebook or anything. Can't always guarantee that we're going to do them and can't always guarantee I see all the messages. There's so many. So sometimes they do get lost. So if you don't hear from me, do um, best thing it really is an email to richard at vobes.com, which is my email address. And if you're anyway interested in helping support the channel, you can become a patron 
and uh, a few pennies a month, a couple of pounds a month, the price of a cup of coffee, helps to put diesel in the van now and uh, gets me and Julia on occasions and other people when we're allowed to meet other people again um, out and about and we continue to make the videos. So it really helps because you don't get a lot of money from the YouTube adverts and I don't put adverts in the middle of the videos because I just think that would kill the nature of them. Um, and if you become a patron you get access to something called the Naked Englishman. Now that's not as uh, crude or rude as it sounds. It's just a daily podcast that I record. It's the sort of behind the scenes um, and my thought process, my philosophy, my ideals, sometimes my politics. It may not be, you may disagree with it, but of course you don't have to. Um, it's just you get an insight into me and I try and share a lot of my life. Occasionally it upsets people. I don't mean to upset them, but some people hold their cherished views in such high esteem that they, you know, they don't like it when somebody else has a different opinion. But that is life. And I think it's healthy that we listen to people, even if they have a, a slightly different opinion. You, you don't have to act on it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to listen to it. But if you become a patron, then um, you will get access. You can subscribe to the Naked Englishman. Naked because it's a stripped down podcast that's just no jingles and jangles and music and effects. It's just me chatting into the microphone and Englishman because that's what I am. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Sunday chat. I'll try and do another one next week. Have a great uh, rest of your Sunday if you're watching this on the Sunday or a great week and I will see you next time. Thanks ever so much. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed it, a thumbs up always helps. Even if you put a thumbs down, that helps too. It shows engagement with YouTube. So it's better than doing absolutely nothing. Till next time. Bye bye.